Okay, I always get a lot of questions on the dewatering, so I just thought I would try to do a real quick explanation of how that works, and then I'll show you the videos from yesterday. But in theory, all they're doing is they are jetting pipes down into the ground, trying to get into the water table, below the water table. And once they get below the water table or in it, then they turn those lines, they're like screens, they're like almost like well screens, but they're only a two inch line. Once they jet that into the ground, they turn the hose to a suction. So they have water that pressurizes it, they jet it down into the ground, now it's in, now it's in the water table. Then they take a different hose, hook it to a suction, hook those smaller hoses, which are two inch hoses, into a four inch pipe that they can continue to just connect to. And then they hook that to a massive pump and they basically suck water out of the ground near your excavation site, just like a well would work. So just like a well, other than um, it's two inch lines, and how we normally do it is we will kind of mark our excavation area. We'll have them go five to 10 foot out. And then depending on how bad the water table is, we'll determine how long they have to pump before you can excavate. So this example, they got there at 7.30, had set up by 8, 8.30. We started excavating around 10.30, um, let them suck it for about two hours. Um, and then it was dry enough on this one uh, to excavate, still kind of sloppy, kind of a mess, but uh, sometimes we've had to have them pump for eight hours. Uh, we've had one job where they've had to pump for two days. Um, so really what you're doing is you're trying to get water out of the area that you're excavating. So they're sucking that water out and you're trying to do it long enough to where you can get the tanks in or whatever you're, whatever you're trying to install down below. You're trying to get it to where you can at least get that in, get it backfilled, and then they can turn that off and then pretty much the water table from the area will then start to kind of uh, come back in. But you're trying to keep up with what, whatever is generating that water. So if it's water table, usually not too big a deal. You're just kind of drying that area or sucking that water out of that area. And then you're trying to keep any water that's gonna infiltrate back into that area out. And that's all you're doing is just trying to keep that, uh, that water that's from around the area out of it um, compared to uh, normally if you dig a hole water is rushing in from all sides um, and it makes it pretty challenging so instead of fighting that all day long we have a company that they uh, come in do that and it's made a world of difference so this job we did not have to do anti-buoyancy um, but we did have them take the water from the ground after we got the tanks in and fill those tanks um, but we have about a three probably about three foot of cover on all of them, uh, which is a lot. Um, normally in a high water table like that, uh, we would uh, not, well, we would add uh, anti-buoyancy devices uh, to keep the tanks from floating if there's only six to 10 inches of cover. And normally that's what you're trying to do is you're trying not to put tanks really deep into a water table um, just for that fact. You don't want those tanks popping out of the ground. So. Um, I'll start showing the video. Hopefully all this makes sense. Okay, we are at the commercial project again. It's been a while since we've been here. We've got a team tried setting a couple tanks here, oh, two weeks ago, I think. And the water table's so bad that uh, we could not get the bigger frame, a little bit wider, a little bit longer, but uh, one piece and then the lid. So the water table, in theory, will sit probably about here. And there's not a seam there that we have to worry about banking the ground. It was just a massive hole of water rushing in. So we've got Lee's trenching here. They've got all the points set up. And uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They got 10, 10 points set up. So we're putting the three new tanks right in here. And then we had the concrete company uh, help us out by, they came and picked up our uh, thousands, our standard thousands and they dropped off uh, shallow thousands. So. Okay, we are getting prepped. So Ethan's getting the sling on. We're gonna get this one set. We got the lid set in there ready. We're gonna set the other concrete tank right next to it. We're gonna dig over by the pipe coming out and uh, make it where as soon as we have that hole dug, 
We can drop this thing straight into the ground without having to track over or waste any time. Okay, first tank is in. We're getting the pipe hooked up. Ethan's getting the mastic on. I'm going to fill in this side so I don't fall in the hole here. And then I'm going to grab the lid. Okay, we got second tank in. Getting mastic on. The watering is definitely working. You can see the pipe shaking, all the water it's sucking out. And it's filling up the ditch over there. So it's been working out pretty good. This is just uh, really nasty material. It doesn't hold uh, shape at all. So we're going to try to get this lid on. Okay, I didn't have time to take video of the other, but we got the second tank in, third tank in. And uh, we're going to start back going. So, actually, I will show you this real quick. Just to kind of give you an idea. This is the discharge hose. Oh, now I just There we go. It's a 1,000 gallon tank. And it's been pumping in here for about two minutes. Probably got. 400 gallons in here. So you can see, we gotta get those wrappers out of here, but you can see how dry. Other than over here, there's water coming in because there's only two well points right here. And it's pretty darn cool because you can actually see the water getting sucked out of the ground. So it's almost like beautiful drinking water because it's already been filtered through the sand. But. So we're gonna fill these both up, keep them from floating. Uh, Brock's on his way to fill this one, and uh, we just now got to get the electrical cut over, and then there's a line over here that we've got to connect that to. So there's a sump line. This is a massive drain field back in the woods back there, and uh, it's a community drain field. So it's a pressure line uh, it's by the road there. So we've got to take this pump, connect it to that pressure line, and uh, we'll be good. Okay, we got Walnut Grove Hydro seed in here. 800 gallons, 750 gallons. We're going to throw into our, uh, we're going to get about 600 gallons into our pump sure. tank. Another 2,000 gallon tanks are about done. This is the day before Labor Day weekend, Friday before, so we're trying to get them out of here. So they came out and helped fill this one tank for us. Okay, Ethan's back filling. Two o'clock. Can't really get going on this till about 9:30. But uh, inspection passed. Everything's approved. We've got uh, septic line run. So he's just kind of slowly backfilling that. We already have the pipes compacted and all that around the, around the tank. You can actually see. Get over there. You can see how the water table's already coming up.